One sign of the great speed of today's globalized world is that the past few years have seen a dramatic increase in the number of Chinese undergraduates enrolling in U.S. universities. This presents our campus communities with outstanding opportunities to learn about China and Chinese culture firsthand from the friendships we make. It also poses challenges for us to have good communication with a large new audience. We want the university experience of all students, Chinese and Americans, to be positive and we hope everyone benefits from the international experiences through their cross-cultural friendships. Seen positively, Encounters Across Cultures allows us the opportunity to gain intercultural experiences and obtain global perspectives with our friendships with people who are not like us. These intercultural friendships can be transformational and life-changing. Seen negatively, however, misinterpreting behaviors across culture can cause confusion, misunderstandings, and hurt feelings. Cross-cultural relationships and developing global perspectives are as important as any frontier of discovery. The purpose of this video is to listen to what commonly takes place in relationships between Chinese and American students. We asked some experienced students to talk about what takes place when Chinese and American students interact. What are the obstacles to forming friendships across cultures? What do people need to know about others who are not like them in order to have meaningful and healthy interactions? How do we see the world differently? And what does this do to our ability to judge behaviors of each group? What you'll see here is a candid conversation with two groups of undergraduate students at Michigan State University. They're not experts in the field of intercultural communication or Chinese-U.S. relations. They're students sharing their honest points of view. We hope that this video can be a good discussion starter for everyone interested in the challenges we all face in understanding the complexities of Chinese-American student interactions. Thanks for watching. I've always wanted to be able to reach out to different nationalities and cultures. They have some kind of similar backgrounds and experience that we don't really have. Yeah. I think finding, finding something in common is really hard because you, you don't make friends with someone without like having something in common with them. But when Chinese students <laughs> making friends with Americans, there's a deep gap. Yeah, I would say sometimes I find that it's really difficult to do that, to bridge that gap between um, like, where do I start? You barely have something to talk about with the American student because we don't know each other that lot, that much. But for someone who hasn't been to China before, who doesn't know the culture, I think it's going to be it's going to be difficult for them to you know kickstart a conversation. Students get together, uh, start off by talking about high school life. Yeah. 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 They, when they came from the same area, yeah. <laughs> well, they have some kind of similar backgrounds and experience that we don't really have. Sometimes when I go play basketball, I, I see Chinese students that are playing too, and they've got you know NBA jerseys on, and I try to make a make it a point to say, oh, you know, hey, what's going on? You know, to start a, start a conversation about basketball, but it doesn't go anywhere. It's easier if the other person is more understand about Chinese culture. I, the closest relationships that I've had with Chinese students are the ones where uh, the Chinese students make it an effort to also to start a relationship as well. Some like Chinese students, like they when they talk with Americans, when they cannot find anything in common, they'll just keep quiet. <laughs> so they just ignore you that yeah. part. My feeling from my experience of why why Chinese students don't necessarily form close relationships with Americans and why Americans don't form necessarily close relationships with Chinese is more so the the flaw of the Chinese students. I think like, it's more like a gesture of uh, listening. So if somebody's willing to listen and really um, accept what, what you said. They think Chinese students, it's, it's Chinese students' responsibility to um, reach out for America. To us, you know, you, you're, you're another person. You're not, you know, just because you're an international student doesn't mean we look down upon you or we think you're extremely special. We just think you're another person and you, you need to make that effort. It should be two parties together. But I, after, I, after a while, I think I understand because they have their friend. Just when we take the re initiative and we ex them, expect them to respond, like respond to our initiation. It's not very um, reasonable for us to expect. Everyone uh, uh, is supposed to be really uh, curious about your culture and really curious about you. So it's like a mutual thing have to work together on that. Man, all the Asians, they're always together. Like, <laughs> you'll never see one by themselves. They're always in a group. 
they might care about their baseball game, football game, everything else, uh, instead of these bunch of Chinese people just arrived. First time they meet a bunch of um, uh, Chinese, they will see their stereotype. The first, like, they are Chinese, and they are yellow skin, they are black hair, they use chopsticks. In mainstream media in the U.S., you've got you know, China becoming this huge superpower and, you know, it's got a communist, you know, government. Um, there's Jackie Chan, there's P.F. Chang's. I mean, you put these things together and try to fill in the gaps and you're absolutely not going to have an accurate uh, view of what China's like. They are kind of like pretend they are open to accept, oh, this is interesting or, <clears throat> wow, I don't know that. But they are not like really want to, well, I shouldn't say really want to know you, but they are not like see you as a person. They see you as uh, another inferior country. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a big reason for uh, why that many Chinese students uh, stay in their own uh, community, keep them kind of isolated from uh, others. If you make friends, like you want to get involved in the American community, they will treat you as either a joke or just ignore you. All Chinese American students know all other Chinese American students. They're all friends with each other. I don't know what that means about their culture. Maybe it's that they're, they're more group oriented. When you have those unpleasant uh, experiences, it's hard for, I think it's uh, um, especially hard for Chinese people, young people to uh, make up your mind to change that. We don't know um, whether we should ask or at when we should ask and how the way it will work out and we never tried or we tried before but we failed so we never tried again. Because at the end of the day it's in another country you only have this um, number of friends around you and <laughs> you feel like oh, you don't have much power to change that. Exactly, I'd yeah. rather just be with my friends, in Chinese friends. Mm -hmm. When I have meeting with my Emerald colleagues I would say and we have Asian um, and white American and African American and we have meetings together and people look at us uh, as, as weird people <laughs> sitting together <laughs> talking really differently. I would say you need a lot of patience when you're talking to a Chinese whose English is, is not that great. I think it takes a lot of effort to keep uh, open-minded for a long time because uh, I've met a lot of great American friends uh, who are uh, who are willing to sit down and listen to you and also share their story. Recently, I was I was talking to to a Chinese student and he was trying to get a, his point across, but it just it wasn't happening. Like he couldn't he couldn't articulate it in a way that that I could understand it. You have to be somewhat ambitious of a person to be able to to really, you really have to dedicate yourself. You just have to have a lot of patience and um, maybe help them work through what they're thinking. If they, they can be open and willing to know another culture, and yeah. they, they are friendly, they are patient to listen to you. If you don't have that patience and, you, and if you don't want to, you know, hear, hear them all the way through, then it's, it's not gonna work out. There are lots of responsibilities. We have to take care of our parents. My perception of American state tend to be more open to change. Recently in the Bro Business Group where we were talking about how maybe the group had gotten too big, how we had taken in a bunch of new members, <coughs> and um, it had only been like a week since we had all the new members, so we're like, maybe we can just tell them, you know, um, sorry, we made a mistake, but uh, we, we have too many people now in our group. And there were some, pe there were specifically the Chinese um, that we were talking with were really upset by the fact that we were just going to let these people go. And it was difficult for me to understand that, like, well, you know, we don't even know these people. You know, they they've joined our group. You know, it's only been a week, but to them, it was like, you know, they're our, they're part of our family now. You know, we got we have to take care of them. Um, they're a part of our group, so that was a that was probably a big cultural difference that, that I experienced with that. I think every Chinese has a dream to be a wild person to travel around the world, but mm -hmm. we'll never do that because we know that <laughs> we have to make money and pay our like own like save money and pay our <laughs> bills. Mm -hmm. bills and pay our parents' bills, mm -hmm. and probably in the future we'll have kids. We have to take everything into our consideration. I think they're more they're more goal oriented in the future whereas like American students like uh, you know we're here in college we're here for the experience you know it's it's part of the American culture is you know to have a great college experience while, whereas the Chinese 
they're here for their degree. It appears to me that they have a number of options in their life, when, whether it's career or um, college, the, you choose a major and anything about personal life choice. They're very um, brave to make their own choice. They are more economical uh, independence because they pay their tuition or they, uh, they, earn, they earn their um, grocery money by themselves. It's more like apart from the family, not like because we are using our parents' money, so mm -hmm. we feel like we should do whatever they told us to do. We're more closely related to our family, so we have to live upon their expectations. Um, for mo for many parents uh, in China, I'm guessing they, they really expect you to um, have a very safe job in the future. So American, like Western countries, they are more focused on the individuals and the pr prosperities. But in the communism countries, which is the Asia country like China, and we concern more about communal things and everything we share, everything we value together, not independently. No one will choose like what's that major? Like musician or historian or you know, major? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, art. Everyone is in engineering or mm -hmm. business like or anything like that. Guarantee us to make yeah. money in the future. I do think that in the China, the one-child policy did affect our our generation. Ourselves is kind of um, isolated with the family, I would say. But we approach to our friends more than our sister or brother. And yeah, we are looking for someone who understands us, who have something to share, so we can be friends for years. We are more looking for something serious when it comes to uh, friendship or other kind of relationship. In the dorm life, you and your mentor, if you get a good relationship with them, they can help you a lot. They're also students and you can have better communicate with them. I'm guessing for some people, if the mentor comes to him uh, once or twice, he didn't feel much helped. He just felt, well, there's just a, a guy or a girl. Keep talking to me uh, about something I'm not interested in. So after that, he might just shut the door. <laughs> but sometimes it's just like every Chinese people, they shut their door. They don't want to be like open the door to mm -hmm. the mentor because they, they think the mentor just kind of like, um, Annoying? Know. Yeah, annoying. <laughs> so maybe the mentor would, could um, at the first day say hi, get um, introduced to each other, and then uh, he might offer, uh, would you interested in going to a football game or something like that with me, uh, to g um, provide you with some opportunities to really go out and see something you are interested in instead of empty talking. We don't really know where to ask for help. Like my first semester, I thought mentor was like, some person to guide us, like look at us. If we do something wrong, they'll punish <laughs> us. And like Office of International Student Scholars, when I first got here, I thought that, that office is, if we have some, do something bad, they'll send us back to China. That's like our first idea about those offices. Because when we were in China, we tend to have a lot of teachers, like watchers, to in case we do something wrong, they'll punish us. So we are not used to there a lot, a lot of like helping system here. One of my one of my friends did have a Chinese roommate, and they never bonded at all. He said that he would always go to um, you know just hang out with his Chinese friends, and it ended up that they both moved out um, to live with other people. So. Um, there, there was never like an initial connection between them. I live in Acres Hall, and on my floor there was, you know, maybe, there were maybe four Chinese students, something, a number like that. And you know, for the most part, I mean, my hall, it is not as as though everyone bonded together. You know, everyone generally did their own thing, but people did form relationships. But usually, the Chinese students did uh, stay amongst themselves. You know, widens your world view, makes you more tolerant and understanding. I do think American people, they have some perspective for the Chinese or the Asian culture. You know, having a relationship with a Chinese person, you get to learn about, you know, the, the absolute other side of the world and how their life is and what they see differently. Yeah, definitely more independent. More independent. How, we learn how do you Li living our own lives. Yeah, and how to deal with the problems around my 
ourselves, like to solve each difficulties by ourselves, not rely on our families and parents. And I think it's made me um, understand more about um, you know diff just different cultures in general, and made me you know um, a more accepting person. One thing like. I did to overcome the awkwardness is to just speak out my mind. You just trying to do something from your heart, not do whatever other people ask you to do. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I learned how to how to be unique and also how to also adapt into the American people here. I mean, at least for me personally, to increase that level of patience. And we are different from you, but we are not totally different from you. <laughs> you know, a lot of Americans do care. They, they do want to help you. Just initiate a conversation and, and see where it goes. Chinese students do need to understand that, you know, despite everything we've said and despite the, the differences that do exist, we are more or less the same. But one thing is China is changing right now and in a dramatic speed. Many Americans might think you are still in the like the 80s, uh, what, what no. they see from Chinatown or old Chinese movies, but things really changed a lot. Just know that you know, we, we understand that the difficulties that um, you may be going through. Besides those certain things that do make a big impact, we're all very similar and you, know, you don't need to stress the differences too much because those are easily overlooked. You know, I mean, that's, differences aren't a problem, differences are what make life. We don't expect people to pay a lot of attention on you to make you comfortable here. I think it is too much for us. We just want to be a normal person and make friends with people who we like. Just give it a shot with, with when uh, trying to start a conversation with an American. If you are shy, no one will know you. Yeah. You have to show yourself to them. You've got to try to get more involved, you know maybe strike up a conversation with the, the you know an, an American in your class, your group partner, your roommate. So if you don't um, reach out and do some kind of challenge yourself, you're not going to learn something. It's part of your study abroad experience. You might fail with one or two people, but in the long run, there's, you'll succeed for sure. <laughs>